All right, what is up, guys? Nate Ford here, and welcome back to another movie review. And today we're going to be talking about Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, because I feel like I feel like I need to touch on a few things, man. Because movies are in an interesting state, you know, and I, I want to dive into it, you know. And I think this is a perfect video to do that in. But um, if you enjoy this type of stuff, you know, definitely feel free to drop a like on this video, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate it. It's free. It helps me out tremendously. Um, but yeah, do it. But um, without further ado, uh, yeah, let's hop straight into it. Now, for those of you who don't know, I don't review every single movie that I watch just simply because either A, I don't think it's going to perform that well in terms of views, or B, it, it, the movie just didn't do enough for me to really just make a whole, you know, movie review about it, you know. So um, recently I've seen movies like uh, Civil War, Tarot, uh, I Saw the TV Globe just to name a few, but, you know, none of them really, you know, blew my mind enough that I'm like, oh yeah, I got to review this. Um, I saw the TV glow was actually pretty good. I would highly recommend that you watch it, but I didn't think it would perform that well on here, unfortunately. But um, we're talking about Furiosa today, which I did want to review and touch on because the movie had a pretty decent enough budget, but it's not performing all that well. And I think there's multiple reasons for that. I, you know, I saw a few reviews, people saying, you know, it's just the price of tickets, man. I, I don't want to go out of my way and spend, you know, all this money on a movie ticket. And that's fair, you know, some people don't have it. Um, and there's also another reason, you know, some people are, you know, more along the lines of why would I go and watch it, drive out of my way to the theater when it's going to be on streaming within the next two weeks, which is also very true. You know, most movies go straight to digital, go straight to streaming services within like two, three weeks. It's actually kind of nuts. So movies are in a bit of a tough spot at, at the moment. And unfortunately, I think aside from Deadpool and Wolverine, I don't really see too many movies doing that well this year. Um, but I could be mistaken. Hopefully some things can prove me wrong because, you know, I was excited to see uh, Bad Boys Ride or Die. I'm excited to see Maxine, but I don't know how they're going to perform. Um, also, with like other movies like Craven the Hunter, with how Madam Webb performed, I really don't see that movie doing well. <laughs> so movie movie theaters are just in a bit of a tough spot, man. It's like either like people just don't want to watch him or they're just gonna wait for it to come out on streaming. Um which is a bit of a shame because you know, Mad, Ma Mad Max Fury Road, it was met with like so much praise, you know, for the you know, the visuals, the story, the practical effects, you know, all these things. It was just met with, you know, great praise. And unfortunately. This movie is the definition of striking while the iron is cold, okay? Usually you're supposed to strike when the iron is hot. And for instance, what I mean by that is think of Iron Man, right? Iron Man came out in 2008, got good reviews, made a butt ton of money at the box office. And they're like, all right, let's get to the next one. So fast forward from 2008 to 2010, you get Iron Man 2. The reviews weren't as strong as the first one, but still good enough. And it made more money than the first one. And then you fast forward from 2010 to 2013, Iron Man 3. The reviews, still not as good as the first one, still pretty good though. And then, you know, it made more money than the first and the second. They understood what they were doing. You know, pretty reasonable gaps between striking while the iron's hot. And that's not what this movie did. This movie is uh, nine years after <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road. Fury Road came out in 2015. This movie came out in 2024. That's nine years pretty much a decade and um you would assume that it probably should have came out like 2017 2018 around that range but it didn't so i feel like this movie is just uh it, it lost people's interest i feel like but that's just my opinion and i think another reason why this movie is somewhat struggling is also due to the fact that it's a prequel and you kind of know what's going to happen with the characters like you you see like oh man this action scene is cool but this character is obviously not going to die because we see them in a future movie. So it kind of has like that problem. Kind of similar to like how Black Widow was, where it's like, uh, the placement of this movie is kind of strange. Like Black Widow probably should have came out like 2013, 2014, around that range. So it's a bit late. Um, and like, like um, think about it this way. Like when Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds came out, a lot of people were just like, no Josh Hutcherson, no Jennifer Lawrence. That means I'm not watching it. 
You know, sometimes people are afraid of something new and a little different. Um, and it's not even just in movies. Think of, you know, the Batman Arkham series. You know, if you watch that, I mean, sorry, played them. Uh, you know, Batman Arkham Origins is the third game to be released, but it takes place before the very first game. And a lot of people are just like, uh, it's it's uh, it's a prequel. Uh, you know, people don't really like prequels that much, apparently. So it, it's a bit rough. So I think that has to contribute with this movie's, you know, failure so far. But I mean, I enjoyed the movie. I thought the movie was fine. You know, it's nothing special, nothing spectacular, but I thought it was good enough that you should watch, you know? And like I said, it's like every movie is like, seems like it's like not breaking even. A lot of these movies are just simply flopping. And it's a bit of a shame, you know? I'd say, you know, if you want to watch it, if you're just wanting a good action adventure movie, just something to distract you, this is a pretty good movie for that. You know, it's not going to be, you know, movie of the year, I don't think, but. I think it's good enough, you know, if you enjoyed Fury Road, if you enjoyed the Mad Max movies, then you should, you know, you should watch this one. And there's some people who believe this movie is false advertisement, which I don't agree with. Like, uh, Mad Max Saga is in the title of the movie, but people are like, oh, why would you put that in the movie even though there's no Mad Max in it? It's just like, you, you kind of expected that, you know, due to the trailers and the ads and the big title that says Furiosa on it. <laughs> but that's just me um but no man i enjoyed it man i thought the character was really good i think anya taylor joy does a really really good job in their role chris hemsworth you know he kind of steals every scene that he's in very enjoyable as well but this movie it's not perfect you know like it does have its problems due to the fact that it doesn't really seem like the main character furiosa really gets anything going up until like probably over half an hour into this movie, like 45 minutes to an hour into the film. That's why I'm like, that's not great. <laughs> like, you're not going to put on Ferris Bueller's day off and then Ferris Bueller doesn't show up until 40 minutes into the actual movie. That's just nuts. But I, I don't know, man. I, I guess if you're trying to, you know, explore the origin story, character building, it could work. But that's a very lengthy time to not even have the main character introduced into the film. But I think... Another problem I had with this movie was simply um, it, it, it kind of has that Uncharted effect, you know, like the Uncharted movie where it's like, yeah, this is cool, but there's other movies with bigger budgets that do it bigger and better. So think of Uncharted. Would you rather watch that or would you rather watch uh, No Time to Die? Would you rather watch Uncharted or would you rather watch Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning? See, like that's my point. And that's kind of what this movie does, where it's like, would I rather watch Furioso or would I rather watch, you know, Mad Max Fury Road that does the action scenes much better, in my opinion. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, recycling some ideas. If it, you know, if it works, it works. Um, but it just seemed like they were trying to do things where it's like Fury Road did it much, much better, you know. And I'm a sucker for practical effects. So the fact that this movie kind of, you know, it's a, it's a bit much with the CV, uh, CGI sometimes. So that was a bit of a slight turnoff for me. I get you can't do everything practical. Don't get me wrong. But the just the practical, sorry, the practical effects of the predecessor was just a bit better in my opinion. But I think this movie, it's a fun little action adventure origin story. Um, I'm all for a prequel if it's done right. OK, I know some people it might not rub the right way, but, you know, I, I say if you enjoyed Fury Road, if you enjoy the Mad Max franchise, I'd give it a watch. It's probably not the best amongst them, but I'd say it's worth a watch, you know, but I would probably give it about like a seven out of ten. You know, it's not necessarily a movie that I would say is movie of the year, but it's a good enough watch that it's like, you know, what, that wasn't bad. But if you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like on it, share it, subscribe. If you're new, I would appreciate it. It's free. But yeah, I'm NA4 and I'm out. Peace.